Yeah. Ready? Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, May 15th, 2017 meeting of the Albion City Council. I ask if you have any electronic devices to uh, put them on silent. Uh, at this time, um, this meeting is called to order, and I would ask that we observe a moment of silence. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Barnes. Reed. Here. Brown. Here. Lawler. Here. Spicer. Here. French. Here. And Mayor Brown. Here. Uh, are there any council members' comments this evening? <coughs> Councilmember Reed. Uh, Mayor Brown and to the council, I would like to take my presentation of Holland Park and Juneteenth off for this week and do it at the next uh, board meeting so that we can give our distinguished guest the time. Is that, is that a motion? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any other comments from council this evening? Councilmember French. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just wanted to say thanks to uh, Public Safety and Public Services who uh, helped uh, make uh, commencement at Albion College last weekend uh, a success as it always is. Uh, it was seamless. Uh, they helped direct traffic around construction in the downtown. Uh, we've heard from families and parents especially who were uh, helped by our public safety officers who were on duty that day. So uh, thanks again. <coughs> and uh, we, just, we graduated a whole bunch of people and we've got some uh, good new students coming in in the fall. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge the uh, NAACP and uh, Kids at Hope. They, there was a, uh, uh, like a joint um, graduation um, celebration for uh, Albion, graduating Albion seniors from uh, all the various districts um, around town. And uh, that was a really great event and it's probably still going on, but wanted to thank them for, for sponsoring that as well. Okay, uh, seeing no other comments, we'll move forward with the agenda uh, for presentations. Item A, uh, proclamation, Tom Gladney and uh, Chief Kip, if you come forward. <coughs> There's several... Uh, former Albion police officers here in attendance. I don't know if I could point them all out or tell you who they were, but <laughs> um, many of them served with Tom Gladney uh, back in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, many of them were Albion College students who came to work at Albion, Publix, or Albion Police Department during that time. Um, and Tom was a mentor to them and a leader to them as a sergeant at the time and later on to be a lieutenant. Um, I got the pleasure to know Tom as Assistant Director of Campus Safety at Albion College when I worked there because he became Assistant Director with me uh, and was a mentor for me as well. So it meant a lot to me to have these guys ask me to do something for Tom and to do this for him. Um, and so what we want to do, Tom, is make you Honorary Chief of Police for the City of Albion. I think you deserve that. I have to apologize because I got the date wrong on here, but <laughs> but it says, for your unwavering support and guidance that helped in leading many young officers on the path to success, and in recognition of your service, loyalty, leadership, and friendship, the City of Albion hereby honors you with much appreciation and gratitude by bestowing upon you the title of Honorary Police Chief. Thank you. And if I plug it in. I, 
I believe there's a former officer that would like to come up and say a couple words, or a couple former officers. So if you'd like to come up and speak, feel free. I would like to just say oh, one thing. To go to work for the city of Yalvin back in the days, and then wake up one evening to go to work one evening and find five <clears throat> students from Melvin College. And the president at that time asked me to take care of them. And they're here now as police officers, judges, lawyers, and uh, to realize that they came by this evening to see me for this weekend. And it's been a joy to have them around. So thank you, City of Albion. City Council, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Keller. I am a lawyer in Chicago. Uh, I grew up in Albion. I uh, graduated from Washington Gardner High School and then went on to Albion College. When I was <coughs> 19, I went to work for the City of Albion in the Department of Public Works, driving a dump truck and patching streets. Um, Later, uh, in about 1966, I think, uh, when uh, the, uh, the Volunteer Albion Area Ambulance Service was established, I was one of the first uh, volunteers, much to my horror. <coughs> uh, and then later, uh, in 67, I became an Albion police officer. And, uh, there was uh, no training at all for police officers in this area at that time. It was on-the-job training. Uh, I'd never handled a, touched a handgun before I joined the police department. <laughs> um, but um, we had what today we would call a field training officer in Tom Gladney. He was a mentor to me and to all of the other college students who, for one reason or another, <clears throat> joined the Albion Police Department. There were six or eight or ten of us at that time. And uh, we had a wonderful time together. And it was largely due to Tom. Uh, when I joined the department, I thought I knew the city of Albion because I lived here for 15 years or so at that point. Uh, I quickly discovered that there was a whole lot about the city of Albion that I didn't know very much about. And Tom uh, showed me the ropes and showed me how to deal with people. I learned from watching him how to deal with people. Uh, he was always there whenever there was any trouble and we needed backup. And uh, I am very pleased to see the city honor him in this way uh, tonight. He really deserves it. He's one of the bravest men I know um, because of all he's been through. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor and City Manager and City Council, I want to thank you for recognizing my good friend, Tom Gladney. And uh, we served on the Albany Police Department together. And if anybody deserves recognition for serving on the Albany Police Department, Tom Gladney does. And I am so happy for him. And he and I are like brothers. We've known each other ever since I first came to Albion. <coughs> And I came here in June 6, 1966, as a police officer and worked for about almost eight years before going to work at the school system. And when I was with the school system, I continued to work with Tom. And you have to understand that 
We fought some wars together back in those days, didn't we, Tom? And uh, there were some times back then, folks, it was not fun here in Albion. But this man was a leader, a distinguished officer, highly respected by his men, and I can't think of anyone more deserving, and I'm so happy for you. And all I can say is God bless you. And, uh, and your wife, who's been at your side, she's been through some stuff with you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you once again, City Council and Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I'm Conrad Sent. I served on the police force from 68 uh, till 73. Uh, I'm also a, a, a college grad here. Um, I want to echo everything anybody, er, that has been said here. I want to say too that uh, many times the character of a person can be demonstrated by the small things that he does. And I want to tell you a story about a small thing that Tom did which I think demonstrates his character. Uh, he and I were riding together in a, uh, on, a, on the day shift. I was relatively new on the department. He'd been on the department a couple of years. And we thought we spied a, a no parking zone on Ma Maple Street around the Corning plant. Um, so we grabbed our, uh, our equipment got out of the police car and we presided, proceeded to write parking uh, citations in what we thought was a no parking zone. And we were feeling real proud of ourselves. We were taking care of these folks that were parking improperly. And we were walking uh, along the, uh, the street. Uh, we would skip uh, one car, he would do one car, I'd uh, go ahead and do the next one. And all of a sudden we, after about 10 or 12 tickets, we walked up on a sign that we'd not properly read. It said, no parking midnight to six. <laughs> and this was about noon. So uh, we looked at each other, and uh, Tom was the senior officer, and he said, well, we're going to have to avoid all these. And that wasn't an easy thing to do. Uh, we had to come back and describe to the, uh, to, to the, uh, to the uh, sergeant what it is we'd done or failed to do. And there's paperwork involved and all that kind of thing. But Tom never hesitated. He said, we've just got to pull these and, and admit our error and uh, go about our business. Uh, and I've always thought of that story when I, when I think of Tom Gladney, you know, how easy it would have been just to walk away. and. Um, most of those folks probably would have paid their citation and so on and so forth. It would have been entirely wrong. <clears throat> Tom knew it, and uh, he stood up for what was right. That, I think, is an ample demonstration of his good character. The other thing that he needs to be recognized for, and Barbara, uh, as Walt was saying, those were fraught times in this town. Yeah. Fraught times. Uh, I remember... Uh, the Martin Luther King assassination and the things that oh, happened yeah. in Albion at that time. We worked 12-hour uh, shifts in four-man cars. And, uh, there were some terrible things that happened in this town. Tom and his wife were instrumental uh, shortly after that, or perhaps I'm not certain about that time, in organizing or assisting to organize a group called the Melting Pot which was um, uh, a social group of all races. And uh, people would get together in, in each other's homes and uh, get to know each other. And uh, it was as a result of that, that was one of the major reasons that, that, that Albion won a very prestigious national award um, shortly thereafter. And, um, I have always respected uh, Tom and his wife, Barbara, for their, their role in that. Um, so I echo again everything 
everyone has said here and uh, wanted to add a few comments to it as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Manager, Councilman. Good evening. Good evening. Most distinguished guests, friends. Uh, my name is John. The last name is Cease, like Cease Fire. When they yelled that on the range the first time and I cranked the round off, they now uh, have changed the uh, order of things to say stop firing rather than <laughs> cease fire. <laughs> so my name is spelled just exactly like it sounds. Uh, there's an officer that I followed onto the department about a year behind him who couldn't be here tonight and he's heart sick about it. And he's in Connecticut with his wife. It was an unavoidable situation. He was a very good friend of Tom and Barbara and a very good friend of mine and an Albion College student and Albion College graduate. His name was Ed Edwardson. And he wrote this letter for Tom for me to read tonight and uh, have it acknowledged by the city council. Dear Tom, although Jenny and I are in Connecticut grandparenting, I ask John C. to give this letter to you on our behalf. The honor being bestowed upon you by the city of Albion was one of our profession and career long leadership. During my 40 year career in law enforcement, I never faced a tougher policing environment than Albion between 1965 and 1975. Our country was in a state of constant upheaval from protesters of the Vietnam War, civil unrest, labor strike, Battle Creek police riot of 1970. Our city was divided on many fronts. Crime challenges were numerous on every shift and resources to confront these law enforcement challenges were scarce. I vividly remember working 12 hour shifts six days a week due to hiring shortfalls. You couldn't hire a cop in 1970 in this town. 
It is with this difficult time that leaders like yourself, Tom Gladney, were tasked with helping to train and retain, keep, police rookies. The Albion Police Department assignment during this period was not easy on anyone. You, however, always brought your A-game to every shift. You were a constant recipient of determination and professionalism. You brought a constant calm demeanor to critical situations we faced and mentored us by your devotion to the police profession. I remember talking to you often about how communities come together and rise above the petty racism that divided us. Our conversations and subsequent socialization between our spouses, Barbara Gladney, led to a wonderful and positive idea. We knew we couldn't save the world, but what if we helped provide a medium that would allow our diverse citizenry to come together and get to truly know each other and that we are all really alike? The melting pot was born provided an opportunity for nearly 200 couples to share food, entertainment, and fellowship. It earned the City of Albion the All-American City Award in 1974. That's pretty prestigious if you haven't thought about that as a city. You and Barbara made that happen. It was the most special time for Ginny and I to live and work there and we're proud to be members of your group of people when we moved in. I feel honored and privileged to have served almost nine years with you and Alvin. We are honored still to share a special relationship with you and Barbara. May God bless you and your family always. Congratulations to both of you for lives well left, well lived, and the service above self to your police department and your community. That's from Mr. Ed Edwards. Uh, I'm caught in an unusual vortex here. I came here in 1965 as a student at Albion College from rural Appalachia. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with what rural Appalachia is, it means I'd never seen a black person until I was probably 17 years old. <coughs> Saw it on TV, but we had black and white TV, so back then everybody looked pretty much the same. <laughs> so my first experience was with the the Albion Ambulance Association, which Paul referenced earlier, I as a college freshman joined and helped and thought it was a good thing to do. Uh, I was raised in an oil patch. I came from that part of Pennsylvania that produces Pennsylvania crude oil. and worked in an oil patch from the time I was 12 years old. And thought I knew a lot about life. Little did I know what would happen when I was thrown into this racial vortex in Vietnam War situation in the mid-60s. My words may not be as pretty and as kind as what the other people have said here tonight, but I've always been the one to just say how I felt. My first experience with black people was not good. I went to work for the Albion Police Department after I had my nose and face bashed in a couple of times at Robinson's Tavern up on the north side of town. I had this feeling about black people that wasn't positive, and I didn't even know. They accused my family and myself of being former slave owners, which they never were. My great-great-great-uncle Ed got a Congressional Medal of Honor from President Lincoln for serving in the Union Army, and I was confused by all of this. I came to work at the police department because I needed a job. I needed to make enough money to get through college. I tried a couple of other places. We had Brooks Foundry, we had, we had the Albion Malleable Iron, we had Gray, we had Albion Steel Products, you could work anywhere in this city in 1965, 1966. I sampled a couple of them and they were horrible and one day I looked out the window and there went by a police car and I said to Conrad, my roommate, I said, you know, that wouldn't be a bad job. Now, Conrad's worked in some pretty lousy jobs in this town. <laughs> He's off an Iowa farm, corn farm. And he's worked some pretty nasty jobs in this town to get himself through college. And we came down and signed up with the Albion Police Department. There were about six or seven of us. One is dead, the rest of us are alive. The most successful might be John Fazekas. He runs a bar in the Upper Michigan Peninsula. I said, John really got it right. He went to the Upper Peninsula and ran a bar. But the rest of us went on to become police chiefs, lawyers, judges, administrative court judges. And out of that five or six, with the exception of John, who's probably happier than the rest of us, 
We're highly successful in our own careers. I spent 35 years in law enforcement. I was a police chief in, in, at Western Michigan University, the director of public safety in Kalamazoo after I left here. I was a police chief in Morgantown, West Virginia, where I earned a PhD in politics on how policing worked. I went on to Virginia, became the first police chief in Roanoke County in a county police department, and went through the uh, unusual uh, process of, of uh, uh, taking the, uh, the authority and the job away from the local county sheriff. And uh, that was an emasculation of a sheriff. It was an interesting situation to go through. And finished my career in Wilmington, North Carolina when I arrived in 1997 and was told in 1998 the city was going to commemorate the entire year the riots of 1898 in Wilmington in which numerous blacks were massacred and decapitated and it was a horrible, horrible time in the South. And I said, what a way to start a career in a new police department. If it hadn't been for Tom, and this is what this is really all about, none of us, I don't think, would have been successful in what we dealt with. Um, I've dealt with race in every police department I was a chief in. None of them was as bad as, as Albion. I've never been as physically beat up, abused, knocked around. I paid my dues in this city, and I paid them the hard way. I've had three facial reconstructions uh, uh, 10 years after I left this department. Um, I've had a number of problems, and I don't feel bad about it, but if it hadn't been for Tom and Barbara, because they were involved in this city coming together, I went to work on a midnight shift and just got my ass beat, you know? There's a difference in what the world was that they were in and the world I was in. And then suddenly there was this recognition and realization that Tom Glad was right here. And Barbara would take me aside and say, John, you haven't seen the whole picture. There's more to this than what meets the eye. I remember standing in the hallways of, of, of Washington Gardner up here with people fighting, kids fighting, monitors like Sandra and and Barbara standing around trying to keep the peace. Walton Nichols was a school resource officer. We only had two black police officers in this entire city, and we had a much larger police department than unfortunately you have today. And been for that man sitting right there, and that woman sitting right there, this might have been a much different community because we could have gone the way that a lot of other communities went, and they kept the lid on it. Now, they had help. But I'll tell you, 519 West Center Street was known by everybody as the hub. Because that was the place you could go that you were having a problem racial, social, economic. They took people in off the street. They took people in from every race and color you could believe and made human beings out of the rest of us who had a chip on our shoulder because we literally didn't understand there was a difference between white people and black people because I'd never seen any. So it's a really emotional time for me. I haven't been back here in 40 years. I saw Conrad sing tonight, first time I've seen him in 40 years. He was my college roommate for years while we were on the police department. So it's a very emotional thing. There's, I've got some demons in this city that I came to get rid of and went and looked at two of them today. I'm gonna go look at a couple of them tomorrow. And I wanna unload those demons and get rid of things I did that I'm not proud of uh, things that I had done to me that I was unhappy about and come to peace with the world. And I think it's wonderful to sit here and look at a black mayor, black council members, yeah. a police chief, look at the audience yeah, in here. It's, it's mixed, there's men, there's women, there's blacks yes. and whites. You and the city deserve credit and Tom Gladney right there and his wife Barbara deserve a huge amount of credit. And if I drive around here next year or two years when I come back again, and I don't see an all-American city sign somewhere posted at the entrance to this city, I'm going to be upset because there are people in this room that really worked to get that designation in 1974. I thank you for your time. I thank you for what you did in, in, in growing me as a person, as a city. I'd like to thank Albion College for doing the same, but that was a that was a tough go too. I wasn't the best student or person, but I did survive it, and I am a better person. For it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the honor that you bestowed on a person and his wife that really deserved it.
eternally grateful. My name is Barbara Gladney. I am the person they keep referring to as the self, the other person. This was 40 years ago. I cannot believe that someone would pay tribute to something that happened that I took for granted. Every one of them, Conrad, everyone, they were at our home. They cooked there, they ate there. They were part of my family because I believe that's what police departments should be. That was like a bad, and we welcomed them. Between uh, agenda items, I want to acknowledge the, the manager, uh, Dr. Mitchell, just reminded me that uh, this year the department is, is celebrating its 100th anniversary uh, of the Albany Public uh, Police Department. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Gladney, and I, I think your. Um, 
contribution to the community is really evident tonight. So uh, God bless you. Yeah. Uh, yeah All I got to say is uh, thank you all for recognizing my dad who works so hard. We will move forward to item B uh, under presentations, proclamation uh, honoring Richard Decker. And I'll have you kick it off. Oh, well, yeah. We'll do it that way. I didn't actually plan it this way tonight. Sure. <laughs> it just kind of fell into place that we're honoring uh, a former officer retired, and we have another officer retiring tonight, and we actually have a third officer. Um, so we just wanted to acknowledge um, Mr. Decker's service to the city. So the City of Albion is a certificate of appreciation awarded to PSO Richard Decker in recognition of exemplifying outstanding public service as a member of the Albion Public Safety Department for 28 years. Uh, Officer Decker received three life-saving awards, an award for fraud investigation, uh, and was involved in the Shop with a Cop program during his tenure uh, as an Albion Public Safety Officer. The city expresses its appreciation for your years of service, and we extend our best wishes uh, on your retirement. So presented on behalf of the Albion and the <coughs> Department of Public Safety, we want to congratulate you and thank you thank for you. your service for 28 years. Thank you. I was always proud of my service to the Albion Department of Public Safety and to the city of Albion. I'm proud of the people I worked with. I'm proud of the group of officers we have now. And in my heart, I will always be a member of the Albion Department of Public Safety. Thank you all and thank you all. This is uh, item C, Oath of Office, Public Safety Officer Bill Lazarus. Now, um, I'm pleased to introduce to you uh, Officer Billy Lazarus. Uh, he just completed the police academy uh, last Friday, graduated, and uh, began his field training yesterday. And uh, so he's being sworn in today. And...
Many of you probably know Billy. Uh, he was born and raised here in Albion. Um, he's over in Marshall now, but uh, his father, who's the proud father in the back, I'm sure, uh, Jim Leonard's is our director of public services. So, Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. <laughs> forward now uh, to item D under presentations, proclamation honoring Nas National Poppy Day. Uh, who's the National Poppy Day? Presentation, okay. okay. If you could state your name for the yes. record. My name is Harry Brooks, Brandy Commander of City of Albion, National Hockey Day, May 26, 2017. Whereas expressing support for the designation of May 2016, excuse me, May 26, 2017, National Coffee Day in Albion, Michigan, and recognizing the importance of honoring those uh, that have worn our nation's uniform. And whereas copies are worn and displayed as a symbolic tribute to our fallen and the future of living veterans and service members. And whereas at the end of World War I, the American Legion adopted the poppy as a symbol of freedom uh, and the blood sacrificed by troops in wartime. And whereas the use of the poppy symbolically comes from the poem in Flanders Field, which movie began in Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row, uh, referring to the poppies that sprang up uh, in the churn herd of battlefields across Belgium and France where soldiers died fighting. Whereas the American Legion family has long, long utilized the red poppy as a fish and flower, symbolizing the blood shed by those who have served in our nation's military and it's fitting as the American Legion and American Legion Auxiliary approach their 100th anniversary, they expand the meaning and symbolism of the poppy, mirroring the manner in which the poppy is symbolically showcased in England and Canada uh, in celebratory fashion on, the, on their Remembrance Day, also known as Armistice Day and Poppy Day. And whereas wearing a poppy will unite citizens from across the country who decide to show their patriotism. Whereas May 26, 2017, would be an appropriate date to designate as National Poppy Day. Therefore, I be it resolved, I hear Brown Mayor, along with the Albion City Council, support the designation of May 26, 2017, as National Poppy Day, and encourage all citizens, residents, and visitors in Albion to join us during this day to honor those uh, service members who have died in the name of liberty, freedom, and democracy, while also showing their support for living veterans, service members, and their families. Thank you. It's just a quick one. Uh, we need the uh, American Legion to be distributing copies on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week. The money's come.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Proceed to uh, public hearing uh, 2017 on sidewalk exemptions. Um, request approval resolution 2017 21. 2017 sidewalk exemption approval. Um, I will open. Uh, yeah, we, we've changed the. Oh, it's the public hearing. Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to open it when they. <laughs> Everybody's leaving. It's hard. Okay. Good evening. Can you get the door? Yeah. Okay, we will proceed. Um, I'll open the public hearing now for uh, the sidewalk exemptions. If there are any uh, residents who have any comments regarding uh, the exemption um, from sidewalk assessment, if you please come forward, state your name. Um, and your address. How are you? My name is Christina Phipps. I live on High Street. Okay. And definitely a place without speaking of Should I? Without a sidewalk. I don't mind paying the extra 50, but I would like to pay it as a donation. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think. Is it working? Is. I'm just asking, you know, that option maybe of those that do pay with taxes uh, and you don't have a sidewalk, the exemption? I, I, I know that there are um, definitely projects that the, city are, that the city is working on. I know I've gone yeah. to City Hall before, but no one's okay. <laughs> provided me with any information other than coming back, the form's not ready or something. Okay. So. Well, what we can do is... Um, after the meeting, we can talk with the, the manager, staff, and, and see what possibilities there are for doing that. Councilmember French. So I'm trying to understand your request. You're, you're saying you're willing to pay the $50, but you want to consider it a donation versus a fee. Right. So from a city perspective, mm -hmm. it all goes into the same fund. Right. So are you making a political statement mm -hmm. in protest? Of Not necessarily, the, just... So just an awareness of so, the so so basically my understanding you, you don't have sidewalks pardon you don't have sidewalks oh no no okay it's okay. never had a sidewalk okay. ever okay, okay. ever <laughs> okay Thank and you, i yeah. brought it up before but i was told to come back but it was like okay who can we talk to okay um it, it was that and was that the we, we, 
I, I apologize. I think we were a little um, That's okay. distracted by the, mm -hmm. the I I just the know that the others there. in the street too were saying the same thing, you know, just you know. Okay. I guess we're probably trying to identify what streets to an Albion don't have sidewalks and are also taxed on it. Okay. Um, Um, I'm just wondering if, if you consider it a donation, mm -hmm. at what point in time would you decide if you want to stop donating and it not be effective? Well, it, apparently this occurred in 2008, initially started. Um, I've always paid it, but it was just uh, a discussion that uh, my account kept saying, you know, look at it. <laughs> it, it. I know it's only minor 50s, but he says, you know, write it off with other donations that I usually make. I know I've donated before to Elvin Public Safety too, but you know. Thank you, Mayor. So um, what you're inquiring is you want it to be a write-off for you? Yes, so just a form. <laughs> hmm. I, I think I, just for the sake of um, I know others have mm -hmm. stated this to me, mm -hmm. and I said this is something I could also request. Okay, that's something that we can we can probably have. Well, is Mayor, if I could just get a yeah. clarification because it's difficult to hear. Yeah, yeah. One second. I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna ask for a recess for one moment. I have a motion for that. So moved. The support. Support. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. We're just gonna have one second. <coughs> So do I have a motion to reconvene? So moved. Support. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I'm um, sorry about that. Yes. That's from French. So, City Manager Mitchell, you are about to sit. I missed what you had said, so if you could just. I, I just wanted to get some clarification. So you qualify for the exemption for the sidewalk assessment. Mm -hmm. So you're asking to keep that in place. However, you want to voluntarily donate the $50. Um, I don't think there's anything prohibiting you from doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would defer to our attorney if he has a different perspective. Well, I think we're talking about two separate things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about tonight is, is individuals seeking an exemption from the assessment. If okay. somebody wants to donate money, that particular amount of money back to the city, I mean, that's a separate thing. I mean, what what is being addressed tonight is just simply the, the exemption. So, I mean, if you want to explore that with the city, I think that you certainly can, but the only issue for right tonight. now is whether or not you're seeking exemption. the exemption. Mm -hmm. And we would even accept a donation of a larger amount. <laughs> 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 that would go to the department. Council Member French. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. So if I'm hearing this correctly, I think what I'm hearing is that is the citizen wishes to be exempt from our sidewalk assessment. Because she does not have a sidewalk on her property, she qualifies under the new exemption, mm -hmm. which we are going to decide today. Yeah. Is she on this list? Could you restate your name and address, please? It's Christina Phipps, P-H-I-P-P-S. Could it be under Kent? Kent? Nope. Nope. Wow. Was there, a, was there a deadline? There's like four houses on High Street. Is there like a time? Today at the meeting. Oh. Okay. So well, okay. you made your address. Yeah, if you just give me your address, uh, give us a bit. 409 High. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other? Uh, oh. Good afternoon. My name is Clarissa Lewis, and I was here for the your address. 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 Seven hundred three Bahala Drive. 
And we were just, well, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more of us, but I guess not. Just to see if we were exempt from the um, paying the taxes for 2017 this year. Yes, sir. Um, we don't have the sidewalks, and we were told that we wouldn't have the sidewalks, so we're just basically trying to see if we were all exempt from that. Yeah, you're on the list. Yes. Yeah. We had received a petition, I think it was late last year, um, from residents on Van Valhalla, mm -hmm. and um, all of them are listed on the exemption list today. Okay, and one more question on that, like the ones that we had like last year, we were talking about, we're not trying to receive any money or anything, but we were just wondering, we, we paid for, ta um, for that um, property taxes last year. What was it, for 10 years? Five years or whatever it was? Ten. Ten? Okay, and we're not asking for money back, but we were just wondering, by us paying it, you know, could they just do something with our streets out there because the streets are bad out there? So the money that we have paid out, can we just get the streets, you know, with the money that we don't paid out? The, 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 the funds that have been, uh, I guess, collected with the assessment are like specifically for sidewalks. Um, but I know that each year we do, you know, we, in each regular year, I know there's some different, there's some changes because of Superior being redone, but typically we um, designate particular streets each year to be redone, so I think you let us know so we're aware of that and so I think we're definitely gonna consider that when we you know can can do local when we do local streets but but the funds from the sidewalks are designated the sidewalks so that's uh See, I understand that yeah as far as it's for the sidewalks mm -hmm. it's understandable um just when you finish excuse me no just go ahead and finish okay. go ahead and finish <laughs> You're good. Okay. I just had a comment, that's all. Okay, Councilmember Spencer. So, Mrs. Lewis, we're, you would like us to consider that your request, that your street be considered for construction or Repair. repavement at the next available budget time. Huh, is that correct? Because the streets that are desig have already been identified and designated for this year for re Paving, so yours would probably have to be considered next available time. Is that okay? Is that your request? That you just, that's what you'd like I to have, right? Everything. So Take that's it. what you got. Okay. okay. Consider the request. Uh, Mr. Reed. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Dennis Reed, 1103 Burr Oak, uh, and I'm requesting the, uh, the exempt. You're on the list. I'm on the list. Well, hey, just wasted the trip. Thank you for your time. It's always nice to see you. Are there any other? Thank you. Are there any other? Are there any other public comments uh, on this uh, public hearing regarding sidewalk exemptions? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and. Uh, Ask for a motion from council to approve those who have applied for exemption. So moved. Is there a support? Support. Is there any discussion from council? Councilmember Brown. Yes, Mayor. Um, thank you. I my property does not have a sidewalk, so I have requested the exemption for for myself. Um, at the advice of Attorney Harkness, I'm asking the council to allow me to abstain from this vote. Is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. We second all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Back to um, <coughs> the primary motion. Are there any other uh, council comments or, or discussion on sidewalk exemptions? Councilmember Lawler. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in the packet, I received uh, three um, um, properties. Are these properties included in this um, this vote to be exempt, even though they do have sidewalks. Can you address the, the yellow now? This is the half of the sidewalk. 
My, uh, I think this is an issue that came up earlier today, um, and uh, the manager and the uh, mayor had asked my opinion on it. I, I think my, my um, position would be that if the properties have a sidewalk, then they would not qualify for the exemption as we drafted the resolution. I think at least one of these properties is a property that happens to be on a corner and has a sidewalk on at least one side. Um, and to date, and, and I think in the interest of maintaining consistency, we've only exempted those properties that do not have a sidewalk and will not receive a sidewalk under the assessment. So uh, that, that's in my position. Councilmember Lawler. So as we vote tonight, these three properties will not be included in that vote. Is that correct? That would be my recommendation to the yes. council. Or do we have to make a motion to remove these three, um, except the others? Pro I would say probably not if they didn't meet um, the requirement of the original okay. resolution that we had. But I think, you know, going forward, this this I think we have maybe one more year on this, and the council is going to have to really kind of think about how we want to do this going forward. Um, so that'd be a, a really good time to. Um, decide how we want to handle sidewalk improvements so but I don't think there, there's a, a need for a motion to remove them but uh, Councilmember Spicer I'm sorry thank you mayor yes. thank you mayor so just clarification <coughs> note, um, property owners who um, were have submitted a request for um, uh, to be exempt from the sidewalk um, fee they will be notified am I correct that they were that their request has been rejected or not approved because they do have a sidewalk yeah. yes everyone will be notified Thank so, you. so mayor um, just to clarify is the motion that council is considering is the attached list less the three properties that are highlighted because we have identified that they do in fact have sidewalks and the addition of um, Ms. Phipps, who um, appeared before you today. Yes. There's, uh, Council uh, Attorney. I don't Hartness. think you guys necessarily need to modify the resolution because the way the resolution is worded is that uh, the exemption from the city sidewalk assessment that were received prior to or at the public hearing for those properties which meet the criteria. I think just as long as you, as a council, acknowledge that those three properties don't meet the criteria, yes. you should be okay to vote on it. Yeah, that's, yeah that's. Is there any other discussion from council? Okay, seeing none, uh, roll call vote, please. Council member Reed? Yes. Brown? Abstain. Lawler? Yes. Spicer? Yes. French? Yes. And Mayor Brown? Yes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Public comment. Um, if there's any person wishing to address the city council this evening, we ask that you would limit your comments to three, no more than three minutes, and uh, observe proper decorum. Are there any public comments regarding the agenda, this, this evening's agenda? Good evening. Um, Bill Dobbins, 15901 East Michigan Avenue. Just want to make sure that this this is on the the agenda tonight, right? Okay. <laughs> Didn't want to be speaking. Um, so I, I'm here to support uh, the uh, vote for the um, contract with uh, Revitalize um, in Bruce Johnston. Uh, Bruce has been a um, a key part of uh, discussions now for about a year regarding these, this property. And um, we're, you know, I, th I think we've, we've developed uh, some, some very nice um, team members um, going back actually a couple years with, with Cheryl coming on board. Um, unfortunately, Rosalind Jones, but Rosalind passed away, but, but certainly was an important part of moving things along in the community new mayor, new city council, um, and um, 
Amy Dupreeze, and and now Bruce is is just sort of a key part of that um, that team um, that will assist us in the development of the Peabody. But all these people are actively involved in in other things, and I should include Danielle and in, in the work that she's doing um, to support all this effort. And so. Um, I hope the council sees fit to move forward with this contract and uh, uh, this important uh, development in Albion. So thank you. Are there any other, is there any other public comment regarding this evening's agenda? Okay. Seeing none, we will move forward to uh, the consent calendar. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Or moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Items for individual discussion. Agenda item A. Request approval resolution number 2017-22 to authorize the city clerk to sign and submit a grant application to the state uh, to purchase election equipment funded by the, I uh, do not know the uh, acronym there. Have a, but I don't know what it stands for. Um, and the ah, I shouldn't know that. Uh, Help America vote uh, in the state of Michigan. Is there a motion for that? So moved. Is there a second? Move and second it. Um, okay. Mayor and Council, what you have before you is a request to authorize the clerk to submit the grant application on behalf of the city of Albion, the Secretary of State, to purchase the new voting equipment from Dominion Voting, um, which has been identified as the equipment um, for, I guess, a statewide, along with the absentee voter counting board tabulators, if applicable, and accessible voting devices for those individuals with disabilities and, and the software. And this will be um, paid for entirely by, is that entirely or is there a small match, Jill? Nope, it's entirely, entirely by the state. Are there any questions, discussion from council? Councilman Brown. Yes, just a question. Thank you, Mayor. The equipment, the new voting system, is that going to be new at every precinct or every voting location? All of Michigan. Oh, every voting map. But we're applying for grants to, to do ours, right? Is this an application for a grant? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we're applying for a grant to cover the expense of the new equipment. They actually have half of funds left over from the previous um, uh, um, equipment that they get that they got. So they've used that, and then the state has kicked in the remainder. They actually came up with three vendors, and so Calhoun County chose Dominion. So everybody in Calhoun County will have the same equipment. Gotcha. Thank you. Question: So are they going to are they going to be um, just newer versions of the scan? Or is it going to be like full fledged electronic? Do you know what the? It's, it's the the tabulator is going to be pretty much the same tabulator okay. as what we had before. Okay. It's smaller and okay. you know, newer, but okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> are there is any other? Going to be any training of people. Is it going to be different? be to where the people who have to use it, the citizens, will know what to do or? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be very similar to exactly the way that they do it now. And all of our election inspectors will be trained on the equipment, so they'll be right there to help them, you know, with, with the ballots and stuff. Okay. okay. <laughs> Councilmember Lawler. Thank you, Mayor. I have just one quick question. Um, being, um, on the um, helping out with the election, do I have to abstain from this vote? I don't. She's a poll. No, because it's, 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 it's just for replacement equipment. It wouldn't, okay. it wouldn't be a, a financial benefit to you. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other questions from council? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Brown? Yes. Lawler? Yes. Spicer? Yes. French? Yes. Reed? Yes. And Mayor Brown? Yes. 
Agenda item B, request approval resolution 2017, number 2017-23, a resolution to approve bid and entry uh, and entry into agreement uh, with Revitalize uh, Limited License Corporation, LLC, for administrative consulting services as a, as a third party community development block grant grant administrator. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Support, second. Moved and seconded. Uh, discussion. Mayor and Council, this is related to the Community Development Block Grant application on behalf of the Peabody Project. And as part of the funding from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, they do allow for some of the funding to cover a grant administrator. In fact, they do um, require that they be certified under their program. So we did issue an RFP um, under their direction and guidance in regards to the specifics of the contract. They're very much involved in oversight. And in response, we did receive two um, applicants. There was a review committee consisting of myself, Amy Dupraze, the um, CEO from the Ec Albion Economic Development Corporation, and Mike Tempu, um, a rep representing the Downtown Development Authority. And we had reached consensus relative to our recommendation, and that is that we vitalize the awarded the um, RFP and contract relative to this project. Um, their quote came in at an amount not to exceed $28,800, and that is um, fully um, reimbursable through the MEDC, so there aren't any costs um, attributable to the city itself. Is there any discussion from council? Uh, Just a quick question, thanks, Mayor. Um, the last line reads that the 28-8 um, is to be paid through the MEDC when the grant application is approved. Correct. Is there any reason to believe that the grant application will not be? And if it's not, then what does that mean for? Then we would not go forward. Um, the grant application itself has not been submitted yet. It's being going to be formulated. Okay. So, making every effort to make sure it gets approved. Okay, so in the event that it is not approved, mm -hmm. are you saying that these funds won't have been um, expended, so we won't have to worry about not being reimbursed, the possibility of not being, recouping that 28,000 is Correct. my question. There would not okay. be a financial burden placed upon the city should the application not be approved. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any other, is there any discussion from council? Okay. Seeing none, uh, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Council member Lawler? Yes. Spicer? Yes. French? Yes. Reed? Yes. Brown? Yes. And Mayor Brown? Yes. Agenda I, oh. Well, yeah, agenda item C, um, council member Spicer requested that there be a discussion about um, the condition of street signs. So, did you want to start off, Rudy? Well, I basically it's a, a pretty small matter um, to us, I'm sure, but for you know individuals who don't live here, it's it's a major deal. Um, but I was just wondering about the process and how um, that works. Um, do do people call in? Do are city workers? around I don't know how it works I just know I've noticed some signs that are um, in um, bad condition and I just wonder what process was for that essentially uh, someone would have to submit um, their request for servicing but a lot as you mentioned a lot of the signs are um, difficult to read Mm -hmm. um, we did have an initial conversation with the county because they do have some sign making equipment um, so we're starting negotiations with them relative to how we can start to periodically um, replace some of the signs at a minimum cost. We were also looking at to having like an overlay on the actual metal component, but it doesn't seem that our signs are um, of the sufficient quality and depth um, in order to qualify for those overlay type signs. So we are looking at some, some cost effective options to start doing a replacement program. Jim, Jim, please. Jim Leonardson, Director of Public Services. Um, what I will do is give you kind of an update. As of today's date, 
um, we have identified 62 street signs, street name signs in town that we feel at this point need to be replaced. Um, 40 of those have been ordered. Uh, the other 22 will be. Uh, and we will continue in our quest to identify more. So I guess I would ask the public that if you have a street sign that's near your home, that if you would be kind enough to report that to uh, City Hall and let us know, or you can call the street department and we'll add it to the list and see what we can do. So the question I have, that's good to hear. Um, I know like, you know, for example, there's some streets where they have like the very old kind of like ornament that, you know, it has the little uh, arch thing at the top of it. So those are very old. You have some of them are kind of like the new kind of green. They're all green, but like they're a little bit larger. Um, and then, but in terms of the posts, are they going to be like the um, silverish posts with the kind of, it does this? Right. Well, we will try to replace what is currently there. Okay. Obviously, we're trying to harmonize the signage in town so everything looks right. Okay. Um, and we will do our best to do that, given the confinement of the mounting apparatus, the pole and the top, as you say, mm -hmm. we'll do the best we can to make everything match and look good, so. Okay. Councilmember Spicer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Jim, I wanna thank you because I was just going to ask about the, um, if, if you were looking at the poles as well for replacement, because I did see some rusted poles and I don't, um, that hold some signs, and I'm not sure how, if that's just being painted, the rust. <coughs> I don't know as we will paint that. I can tell you that we have had volunteer groups in the past address some of those things, and maybe that's something we can look at again for this summer. Um, I know Councilman French had a group that addressed that last summer, the summer before. Two summers ago, yeah. And actually got quite a few of them done. But, uh, so maybe we could move forward in that direction again. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Councilman French. Thank you. Um, so not wanting to be a flying in the sign ointment as it were but as was stated before we have an awful lot of historical signs and we are in an historic city so the question is are we going to be in violation of our street signs do they fall under the historic places i'm thinking of the street signs in the downtown um, do we have to be in terms of whatever the historical association is do they have to be the ones that have that nice you know, the ones that are cast iron, that are stamped, and, you know, filigreed at the top, et cetera. That I do not know, um, but I will research it to make certain that we fall within where we need to be. Um, along with that, I'm sure that MDOT has certain standards on their roads as well, so we will make sure that that's all addressed. Okay. Thanks. Are there any other uh, questions from council? Mayor and Council, if I could offer, we already Thank you. have a wayfinding committee in place, um, although they're looking at uh, regards to signage around, along the major, major corridors, um, but we ca I can expand um, their, but they're focused on um, to include looking at the signage as well in general, and especially in regards to it, um, historic signage, if there's any requirements that we would have to meet for that. Hopefully funding is what it is. Okay. We could sell the antique ones. Are there any other? Are there any other? Uh, Councilmember Spicer. Quick comment, Mayor. I don't want to call out specifics, but I did notice, and Jim did mention that there were 82 identified signs that were going to be looked at and replaced or updated. Or, but I, I did notice an increasing one that their signage, Cooper Street area, and Broadwell Road, in the back. So, okay. okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Item D, uh, discussion council rules of procedure. I know um, Jill sent the uh, corrections out. Were there any major concerns? Um, uh, Councilor so French. I'll, I'll take ownership of this. Um, since our last meeting, uh, I have been at Extremely busy. I, I sent a, a copy to mm -hmm. Councilman Brown. She's extremely busy. We've not actually met yet, um, and, and that's on me. Um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So it was what? my understanding that we were tasked with, with sort of meeting and sort of drafting. Well, what 
Councilman Brown. Well, okay, yeah, we, you're, you're right. We have not been able to meet. At the last meeting, though, um, I did ask that we put this on the agenda because and it was during that time that you and I both volunteered to be right. on a subcommittee. I think, um, Mayor, were you going to do that? Well, yeah, I was, I was going to ask the council. My understanding of the last meeting was um, the council have a chance to look at the revisions that, the, that we had worked out during the work session with uh, Mrs. Uh, Seward. And, you know, if you had any of those, to report them back. Um, but then what my suggestion was to, to, to expedite the whole procedure was just to set like a three-person media council, charge them with, you know, doing, if there's any other kind of heavy lifting, and then reporting it back to council. And I, and, and I know Councilmember French and Councilmember uh, Brown expressed interest, and then I'm, I'm definitely interested. So I was going to ask council, I don't know if we need to modify the agenda, um, if council would be okay just approving the little working group to get that done and bring it back. Um, but Councilmember Brown. Thank you, Mayor. I would just, I'd like to add that we think about a deadline for this subcommittee yeah. to report back. Yeah. I just don't want us to let it fall in the cracks. I want us to keep the momentum going that we had at our, okay. at our training, so. Could we say this is the second meeting of the month. So maybe the first meeting. Second meeting of June. I was going to, I was going to say the first meeting. Well, we got Memorial Day. Oh. Wait. Yeah. Wait. The, no, the first, the first meeting in June. <coughs> Would be June. Yeah. But, but that she's right, it's Memorial Day. Um, no, June 5th is not Memorial Day. Or no, I'm saying the, the week, the, the weekend, but excuse me, Councilman Brown, go ahead. I, I, thank you, Mayor. I, I'm not objecting to the first meeting in June. I'm just okay. asking that we think about there is a graduations and open houses and there's Memorial Day coming up. Um, so I'm suggesting the second meeting in June because we may have to meet more than once, oh, wow. the subcommittee. Oh, wow. I hope not too, but it's possible. <laughs> so I, I'm either way, I, I'm fine either way. I just want us to set a goal deadline is what I want what I would like to see happen. Councilman Lawler and Spicer. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Um, so this subcommittee is, what's wrong with what's written right here? So I guess I'm not understanding why we have mm -hmm. a subcommittee. Uh, well, we don't have, my, my thought was to do that just because um, there were some, there was some language that, um, Call it Coco, but Miss Seward had suggested and we changed that. Um, but because of the the time constraints, there were some um, other language that really wouldn't I would think would be not, would, would not be controversial. But I wanted to include it because if we want included in the work session packet from we, when we did have the work, the work session was a um, a, uh, a copy of the rules of procedure from uh, Port Huron that were actually very well put together. Um, and so they, the, even the formatting of the way it was formatted was helpful. Um, so really what I had in mind is just uh, a meeting to click down, to sit down and, and agree on a formatting that mirrors that and then bring it back to council that with, with that with minimal changes to what was happening, what, what was discussed at the, the work session. Because you know, there were, there were some, um, things that we didn't get to cover, but you know, let's say um, one of the things that Huron had is they had a section on meetings. So they described, you know, a regular meeting, special meeting, you know, work session, and those are kinds of things that um, we do. I don't know how well they're addressed in our current meeting, uh, current um, rules, but they should be there so that you know, it's clear about like what happens at those various meetings, but, and, and, and the thought was to try to <coughs> prevent us from having, you know, endless, um, I guess, work sessions based on the rules, because like Councilman Brown said, we want to wrap this up. Um, so that, that, was, that was my thinking, pretty much. It was to try to get it down quicker. 
Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Spicer. Um, um, I like that. Um, I was thinking that um, the committee is uh, Ms. Councilman French and Brown and mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, that. Um, well, it's, it's not. I'm asking. I'm suggesting the count for council to approve. Oh, yeah. Oh no. I, I was just saying. I don't know that we need to figure out a deadline. I mean, I think once you guys talk, and you can we can figure that out at a future date. So. Oh, okay. Just wanted to mention that. All right. That's my comment. Um. Okay. I'm good. Okay. <coughs> so I guess. Sorry. Yeah. Councilor French. I, we, in order to, to make this meeting official, we have to modify our agenda. So I would move that we would modify the agenda to allow for us to approve the creation of a subgroup of three to uh, consolidate the rules uh, that we have currently been operating on with some suggestions we've received from the consultant and our, through our council training from now a month ago, um, along with council rules that we were exposed to at that training session from the city of Port Huron. That we would, we would in that, that subgroup would then, after combine, reaching agreement on how we combine these four pieces of information, would bring that report to the council by the first meeting of June with at least a report on progress. I support that motion. That was beautiful. For a motion. Um, so there's a motion to amend the agenda to do that. There's a second. Uh, do a quick roll call vote to do that. We don't need a roll call. We have, we have to, well, to change the agenda. Council Member Spicer. Yes. <laughs> French. Yes. Reed. Yes. Brown. Yes. Lawler. Yes. And Mayor Brown. Yes. Is there, is there a motion to approve uh, the subcommittee made up of Councilmember French, myself, and Councilmember Brown? Is there a motion? I would make a motion okay. that we that the subgroup of three be consisting of myself, Councilman Brown, and Mayor Brown. Mm -hmm. Support. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Um, Let's have a quick roll call vote. Because it's a committee. You can do Council that. Member French? Yes. Reed? Yes. Brown? Yes. Lawler? Yes. Spicer? Yes. And Mayor Brown? Yes. Thank you. Um, agenda item E request approval for assemb assembly uh, permit for Salem United Church of Christ, rummage and bake sale in Kroll Park. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Uh, is there a representative? Okay. Mr. Mayor, council members, Charles Savage, on behalf of Salem United Methodist Church, what the proposal is and the request is for the area behind the church there in the park okay. to set up tables for a rummage sale. Okay. And part of that, which was not included in this, and it won't uh, change it is later we'll be coming back to you with another request because we will be showing some free movies in the park as well okay. so we appreciate your consideration and your approval thank you, thank you. is there any uh, discussion from council or questions okay councilman brown thank you mayor just uh, quickly um when is the rummage and bake sale scheduled the 20th of May. okay thank you Thank you. Okay. Eight o'clock until three. Okay. At Crowell Park. That's what it's called. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, the Water Tower Park. The water tower. I have a water tower. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I even have cinnamon uh, rolls. Are you going to have cinnamon rolls? I don't know. Yeah. Um, all those, we're going to have a, a, a a roll call vote for that. There's no other discussion. Okay. Councilmember Reed. Yes. Brown. Yes. 
Lawler. Yes. Spicer. Yes. French. Yes. And Mayor Brown. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> agenda item F, request approval to open City Hall at 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, May 17th, 2017 for an employee appreciation breakfast hosted by First Baptist Church and Homestead Bank. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Do you want to? Sure. Well, I see Scott Evans is here in the audience, but um, we're very thrilled that... The pastor. Um, pastor first Baptist. And the pastor. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, we received a, a very kind and generous invitation um, from First Baptist Church as well as Homestead Bank to show their appreciation to all of our employees, and that's scheduled for this Wednesday um, from 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. at the um, Ludington Center. So in order for um, most of our employees to be able to attend, um, we are asking that City Hall um, postpone the opening of City Hall for a half hour until 8.30 so that they can um, participate in the celebrations. Are there any comments or questions from Council? Councilman Brown. Will you be open 30 minutes later? Yes. Okay. I didn't think you would, but okay. Are there any other comments? Or do you have any? Uh, I just wanted to say that um, First Baptist Church, um, this is a series of events that we'll be doing throughout Albion community. Um, we have had um, a breakfast for Harrington teachers last week. There's some painting projects, but um, it's about engaging people, and we're very excited to be able to do this for city employees. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, if there are no other <clears throat> uh, questions from council, uh, this, this is a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, agenda item G, request approval of temporary signs for downtown businesses. So moved. There's a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, Basically, we wanted to get a consensus from council relative to allowing some of the local businesses, especially in and around the downtown area, to have some um, signs placed to help direct people to both their businesses um, from the rear as well as the parking. Um, and sometimes those may be in places where we don't normally permit signs. So as we're asking to be able to proceed with establishing a variance process so that they, they could help identify where their businesses and parking are going to be located. I noticed one of the uh, long-standing establishments has put one up there, you know, right you near know, the skating rink used to be by the train, the railroad um, line there. So, is there any like uh, requirements for relative to size of how? We were going to work out those details, okay. but we thought we would first get um, approval from you to go forward before we started working out the specifications. Um, we have to redo our sign ordinances all together, but during this construction period, it seems reasonable to allow for some local businesses to be able to identify, help identi patrons identify where they're located. Councilmember French. Um, I would approve this with um, an interesting possibility. What if we actually had a sign contest? Make it as big and gaudy as you want, as long as it doesn't shine light. It's not lit, right? It's just a painted sign. Um, to just sort of decorate the downtown so that as we look at the, the construction, we actually see something that might be kind of cool for a while. Just a suggestion. As long as you're in charge of that committee. Hey, I will be the despotic ruler of all decisions. <laughs> uh, Attorney Hartness. Um, while while I, I think that Councilman French's idea would be a good thing for the community, I can foresee a host of legal issues that would stem from it. Um, so do that. And, and preemptively cut them off. Um, I guess. 
I guess my suggestion would be, at least for, for purposes of, of temporary signs, that the council do something along the lines of, given that it's a temporary situation, limited to a certain number of signs, a certain size, maybe like sandwich board. Like, I mean, we can throw some arbitrary numbers on it, but um, you know, I, I think maybe just keep everybody somewhat uniform. I would draw my request. <laughs> the of I support it. <laughs> um, so I, I think I, I'm not Councilmember Lawler. Uh, thank you, Mayor, um, <clears throat> and um, um, Dr. Mitchell. Help me out with this if I'm saying anything incorrect. But um, at a um, former DDA board meeting, we had um, we talked about having signs in the two. Um, let people know where the businesses were from, from um, Clinton Street. Um, so um, the request, nobody really took a hold of it, but um, I'm happy to see that um, the merchants downtown really want this. Um, is this something that could be brought back to the DDA or is this something that um, we're asking the council to provide because I know the DDA I don't know how much funds that they have to work with, but um, if we're talking about doing these signs for the downtown area, um, could um, our um, chair be included in the decision of the signs that are we're going to display, or who takes on that responsibility? The, so the the one. What, what I'm hearing is there's two, there's two things. One is allowing the business owners to have their own signs, right? Mm -hmm. That's one. And the other thing is what you're saying, which is another thing, is the DDA kind of was wayfinding um, and the status of that, right? Okay. So what, what do we know the status of? Well, I think as you all know, the DDA has very limited funding. So what we were able to negotiate with MDOT as part of the project, they did put up some signs to direct people to um, downtown businesses, I think it's more generic, as well as the downtown parking on both sides of Superior Street. So those are in place. Um, I, I can approach the DDA, but I, it would have to be a very nominal cost. Um, but the, the request that was before you was relative to the businesses themselves if they are interested in putting up signs that oh, some are starting to um, so that we can have it, it to look consistent. Look, and if John Tracy fit, provide some additional information. <laughs> John Tracy, Director of Planning, Building, and Code Enforcement. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it, the downtown uh, with Superior Street closed up does undoubtedly make uh, a hardship for a lot of the businesses. Uh, I would suggest that they be um, limited, of course, to how big and definitely how many and uh, make sure that we don't create a problem where we have any type of uh, hazard traffic, traffic hazards caused by the signs for pulling in and out of the the parking lots uh, were, I would observe these mostly being, or suggest would be on, of course, uh, Clinton Street and possibly uh, behind on Marketplace, behind the uh, businesses on the east side of Superior Street. Um, of course, we would not be able to put any of these out on any MDOT streets such as Superior or Austin or Erie and things of that that nature there, but at least give the businesses some chance to have some additional additional uh, advertising without creating a, a hazard. Questions? Any other questions from council? Okay, thank you. Um, we have a vote. If, if seeing no other comments. If, Ask for a voice vote in favor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. City Manager report. Thank you.
Well, Mayor and Council, um, <coughs> if you haven't noticed, there is um, street construction going on on Superior Street. And um, between old maps and old water mains, there are occasional water conditions created. Um, I do want to thank all of our employees who have been extremely responsive um, to these situations when they do occur and helping to notify all of the businesses um, that are impacted. Um, there is a scheduled shutoff this week, and if I could ask Jim Lennerson to come up and speak to that for just a moment. What we are looking at, um, Wednesday the 17th is a scheduled shutdown of a portion of the downtown area. Um, as near as I can tell in consulting with staff, um, we are looking at East Erie Street from Linden West to Superior Street. Um, from Erie Street South on Superior all the way down to River Street. That's the area at this point that we feel that will be shut down for a matter of time. Um, what they're going to do basically is insert a couple of valves uh, in the water system so that if we have any further future incidents, um, that we're able to isolate a smaller area a lot quicker. Obviously, some of the valves we have are as old as the piping below them, which is pre-1940, so they don't always operate as they should. So that's what we're looking at. Now, I guess the caveat to that is because of the fact that we are going to depressurize the system basically <coughs> down to zero, open it up and install some new valves um, over an extended period of time, one day basically, one work day, um, we're also going to have to issue a boil water order. Uh, I've taken care of that paperwork. I've had it already uh, okayed by the DEQ. Uh, that will be disseminated tomorrow um, along with, and actually uh, we did have some notices go out today to residents as well as some of the businesses. <coughs> A lot of them weren't open, open when they were <coughs> delivering them and they got busy. We had another issue, water issue downtown again today, so. Um, which was in preparation for <coughs> Wednesday's event. So um, what will end up happening then with the boil water uh, order is that uh, once things are back up in place, we'll flush the system really well. Um, and we have to take bacterial samples and make certain that we don't have any contamination within our water system. Uh, once we take two rounds of those, which we're hoping to do Thursday morning and Friday morning, they have to be 24 hours apart. Once both of those are cleared, we'll have put the system back in service and uh, if everything goes well, I will reissue a rescind boil water um, Monday morning. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, is there any questions at all? Okay. Councilmember Spice? Just so I'm clear, the areas you just mentioned are going to be shut down from Wednesday until Friday? The shutoff <coughs> will be Wednesday, but we will shut, <coughs> as I say, it was, it's from Erie, it's on Superior Street from Erie to River Street. And then Erie itself from Superior to Linden Avenue. It's basically a mm. couple of strips. Like an L. is all day or? I'm yeah. sorry? The time frame? Uh, all day. Depends. I mean, we're hoping to get it back up in service quicker if we can. Um, it depends on how long it takes them to get those valves in and everything hooked back up. So residents um, just in that area just should expect to be without water. All I think day. we've got it scheduled off from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. as I recall. So and hopefully, as I say, things go well and it will be less time than that. Um, the boiled water will still still be in place until we have clearance on our bacterial sampling. So, and hopefully by Saturday we'll know. Does, so, that, does that affect the water? Which light? basically means that you can't drink or cook with the water. You can bathe in it, but do not cook or drink with it. With it. So, um, 
those will be, as I say, disseminated tomorrow, that boil water uh, order, and then uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you. And then if I might continue, um, on June 28th, we are planning a community visioning celebration at the Albion Fire Station. It'll be an opportunity to share um, some of the plans and projects that are going on with the city, as well as get um, input from residents on what they would like to see, especially in regards to housing and zoning, what they think um, Albion should look like going forward. Danielle, what is the time for that again? Four seven. Thank you. And I um, was able to attend a retirement party for Paul Mikowski. Um, he was the environmental health officer for Calhoun County after over 30 years of service. Um, so he's moved on to having fun. He'll be um, contracting with them for a period of time to help with the transition. Also last week, um, Mr. Bonner had a, a meeting with a group of individuals, uh, including Representative Bison and um, Prosecuting Attorney Dave Gilbert, um, who were there to talk about the marijuana laws and what are the implications for law enforcement in particular in communities, um, especially in Calhoun County. And we had the <coughs> first of the three 5K races, and the first one was Run the Rock and Bulk Chief. Scott Kipp and Stacy Levin both participated in the run, and we're looking forward to the next run. I forgot if it's June or July, but it's coming up, and we hope to have a lot more people participate, especially city employees. We'll be a part of the city hauler team if you run, or the city crawler if you walk. <laughs> so, uh, so those are going on. <laughs> The Calhoun County-led task force is planning um, a series of public information events as well as um, some lead testing for children zero to six, um, and they're going to be meeting with the Healthy Baby Committee to see if they could possibly even coordinate with the functions that they put on. And as you are aware, Granger has mailed out a communication to um, all of the customers to let them know that if they choose to have um, invoices without specific wording that they could just merely contact them to have that removed. Uh, AmeriCorps VISTA, that we're winding up this first year of the program. It's been exceptionally beneficial to us as a city, and we're starting the interviews for the upcoming year applicants. The City of Albion is anticipating having two positions, one focused on planning and the GIS system, and the other one relative to neighborhood stabilization, and we hope to get started with having um, neighborhood planning councils in designated areas. The um, auditors are finalizing <coughs> their audit report, um, so we'll be coming to you probably in the month of June. And let's see, the Albion Building Authority has rescheduled, has scheduled their next meeting on June 8th at Maple Grove, which is my birthday, June 8th. <laughs> <laughs> And let's see, there's a number of events, including the Resilient Communities. Um, this has really been um, a, a great series of events and some great conversations, so I encourage people to participate. Um, there's a screening tomorrow, um, a book study on Thursday at the library, another community conversation on Thursday, June 1st, and all of the events are free. Um, I did participate this weekend with a tour of the African American Museum, and that was, um, it's always enlightening to be there and to learn more about um, our history. And as it was mentioned, the employee appreciation is going to be this Wednesday, so City Hall will be opening a half hour late at 8.30 on that day. And thank you again to the Ludington Center and for making that available for that space and the First Baptist Church in Homestead for hosting the event. Um, I think you received today a notice in regards to the prayer breakfast, and this one is going to be honoring mothers. That will be on Saturday, May 20th at Albion College at Upper Baldwin. There is a cost for attending that. And the Warren Treaty video, which many of you participated in, I understand the premiere is going to be Wednesday the 24th at the Bone Theater. And the wonderful Albion's Farmer's Market is reopened. Right now it's on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Stafford Plaza. They have hired the new market master. Um, 
Laura Overholt, and you may know her as the one who makes the tri triple chocolate cookies that Louie loves, <laughs> along with some, some other things. So we're really excited to have her on board. They will resume their Wednesday um, early afternoon, evening um, sessions as well, I believe, in June. And then on June 10th will be the French market from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And they are accepting applications for vendors for that event, including um, food products as well as crafts. And the contact person for that is Stacy. And that concludes my report. Sure. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> future agenda items. Are there any future agenda items this evening? Okay. Uh, okay. Like oh, Councilman Reed. The two things, uh, Juneteenth and uh, uh, Holland Park. Holland Park. Okay. So for presentation items, uh, Juneteenth and Holland Park. Okay. And Councilman Brown. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this doesn't have to be the next meeting, but definitely somewhere in the near future. Um, I'm encouraging council to be proactive in um, looking at how the possibility of Crow School closing um, will impact the polling location for precincts one and five. So um, I'd like to see that be a discussion or, or okay. sometime, something Absolutely. In, the, in the future. Thank you. Um, are there any other future agenda items? Okay, seeing none, we'll move forward. Uh, motion to excuse council member, uh, absent council members. Is there a motion to do that? He, yes, we did. Yeah. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, public comments. Uh, citizens addressing, oh, I shouldn't say citizens of public addressing the council. Um, if you would limit your comments to no more than three minutes and we'd ask for proper decorum, is there, is there any co uh, public comments this evening? Mike Behrman, 11016 29 Mile Road. I have to commend you tonight for having such a tremendous group of people here um, that you honored. Because if we're not out honoring the people around us that are doing great things, then shame on all of us. I thought you did a very, very nice job with that tonight. And that also, I would like to remind you that Older Michiganders Day is Wednesday at the state capitol and there are still a few spots on the bus like you need to get a hold of the senior center a fork senior center to find out how to catch the bus um, so hope to see you there thank you are there any other public comments this evening okay seeing that I'm going to do something go, go off script um, Danielle Congratulations. I, I uh, went to uh, the reception before commencement. I didn't stay through the whole program, but I, I saw the book and just kind of leafing through it and saw you in there. And I'll put your business out. Summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, which is excellent. So, Um, are there any other, seeing no other public comments, we're going to move to the end of the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Mo <laughs> moved and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Thank you. Good evening. Good.